welcome to another episode of Sports and Discourse with your host, Derek Stevenson. And on today's episode, I got a couple of different things to talk about. I actually just came back from vacation. I was in Hilton Head, South Carolina, enjoying the beach. And there was a lot of interesting uh, situations that was occurring with my Kentucky Wildcats, right? Number one, we had uh, the... Um, the Big Blue Bahamas tournament, they were finishing out. They started it when I was back home, and I had to watch the rest of the games while I was on vacation. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Then out of nowhere, we had this weird, um, I guess you would call it Kentucky fan beef that happened. So the football uh, fans was kind of going at the basketball fans and a little back and forth. And that was kind of a weird situation where our coaches were kind of stepping out of pocket a little bit and making some comments. And uh, it just kind of got a little funny for a second there. And lastly, but not leastly, I want to talk about um, some comments that have been made about Coach Cal and whether he was the right person for the job and if he uh, we should be looking to replace him. But first of all, I want to give you um, my thoughts on the Big Blue Bahamas tournament. Um, I actually liked what I saw out of the team. I think that they played really well together. One of the things that I really enjoyed was they all seemed to be hungry on defense they um they seem to take a lot of pride in locking down their man and they were going uh to protect the rim you had every time somebody was shooting around the basket you had you know several guys trying to make uh blocks and you know everybody was just getting after protecting the rim rebounding getting out in transition they were using defense to turn into offense which was what I liked so overall I was really impressed with the defensive effort from the team now offensively I seen a lot that I was encouraged of it seemed like they have multiple guys that can score seemed like it's going to be one of those seasons where you might on a on any given night you might have you know, a different guy leading the team in scoring and he might not lead the team in scoring for the next three or four games. It just seems like it could be that wide open. It just seems like a lot of guys are capable of getting hot. On one hand, you have um, Antonio Reeves, who actually won the MVP of the tour. He seems like a guy that uh, can just go for big numbers on any given night. Then also you have guys like Chris Livingston that just seems like he easily can score, even if he's doing it quietly, just pitching in a little bit here and a little bit there. Seem like he might go. Uh, seem like he's going to be one of those guys that might be able to just always give you eleven to fifteen on any given night against any uh, level of competition. Um, we got guys like C.J. Frederick that eventually he's going to get really hot and probably it ain't going to be nothing to see him hit, you know, two to five threes in the game. We got Cason Wallace that just seems like he's going to be one of those guys that's all over the place. He's going to be playing hard on both ends of the court and making things happen. Then you got guys like Damian Collins that's going to be uh, just rim running and attacking the basket. It just seems like um, there's a lot of guys that are capable of making stuff happen, which leads me to what I want to talk about, which is Oscar Sheeway, right? Now, Oscar Sheeway is the returning player of the year. We all know Oscar Sheeway is an outstanding man. He, uh, he preaches in his spare time, so we know he's not a selfish man at all. I heard reports that he was very excited and very happy to see all of his teammates excelling and everybody getting a moment to shine. But honestly, I feel like it could potentially be dangerous if we just kind of downplay the importance of running the offense through Oscar Sheetway, right? Now, I definitely think that guys are capable of making stuff happen, but I feel like they still need to establish some kind of identity because when the games get tight and situations get funny, you kind of want to know, okay, in this part of the game, we go to Oscar Sheeway and he makes stuff happen. I would like to see him, you know, have, I want everybody to shine, I'll say, but I do want 
the team to have an identity on offense. I think on defense, they already establishing what kind of team they're going to become. But as much as I know Cal preaches, play for your teammates and everybody's unselfish. And I know he's thinking about this Anthony Davis situation where, you know, Anthony Davis was like fifth in shot attempts on the team and he still was the number one pick. And I think that's all like great. But I don't think Oscar Shewe is Anthony Davis. So at the end of the day, I think the type of players were a little different. So it's not really like at that point in the time, you know, you really couldn't just get a ball to Anthony Davis and, you know, everybody get out the way and he was going to score. But Oscar Shewe kind of established that last year that you could kind of, you know, give him the ball and he could put the team on his back. And I just want to make sure that they don't completely go away from that because I feel like him being the dominant presence that he was, which was what made them a final four contending team. And I think that they're going to need that type of identity in order for this team to reach his potential, which to me so far I don't want to jump out the window, but I do see uh, potentially Final Four with this team, right? I know anything can happen, and I got to wait and see them do their thing against some competition. But right now, I feel like they could uh, potentially be a great team. So I do want to see um, them basically like establish an identity, and I do want them to run the ball through Oscar Shewe, and I want everybody else to feed off of what he does. I want him to be the leader. I want him to be hungry for the basketball, and I want him to be the catalyst that sparks everybody else that plays well. But, um, you know, we'll just have to see how, how things progress, and I'll get a better feel for what happens when the season starts and they get to play some more uh, exhibition games and whatnot. But moving on, I want to talk about this weird Kentucky beef that happened right so I'm sure everybody's aware of at this point I'm reporting on it late but basically what happened was coach Calipari has been trying to get new basketball facilities right and he made a statement where he basically if you read his entire statement in a nutshell he was kind of saying the football program has a has great facilities and other programs in the school have you know, have had their facilities upgraded, the baseball program and, you know, other, you know, other athletic divisions have had their facilities upgraded. And he feels like it's time for the basketball team to get some new facilities and some new upgrades. And he just kind of felt like, you know, with Kentucky's tradition as a basketball school, that it it was kind of disappointing to him that, You know, he's the last one on the list to get his uh, stuff upgraded. And, you know, he kind of felt a little disrespect, disrespected that he had to beg in order to get his team, which because at the end of the day, we all know that football runs most universities, right? It's just a more profitable sport. So the majority of most universities, whether they are a basketball school or not, get the majority of their funding from their football program. Kentucky's no different. It wouldn't shock me if Kentucky's football program made two times or to maybe even three times as much as the basketball program makes. But Kyle's point was traditionally Kentucky is a basketball school. When you think of Kentucky, you think of basketball first. So his point is if you want me to continue to have a successful basketball program I need to have my facilities updated so that we can keep competing and recruiting the best players and have the best potential situations to continue to have the program on the rise now I think what happened was Stoops and some of the other coaches Vince Merrow I think they kind of got you know clickbaited if you will with uh, like a small segment of what Calipari's statement actually was and it kind of triggered him a little bit to to stand back and be like, hold up now. Like, we get what you're saying, but Kentucky's on the rise. And I can't really knock Stoops. Kentucky is on the rise. Like, he talked about having, uh, I think he said, uh, we got four uh, po- consecutive postseason wins. 
And Kentucky's definitely uh, on the rise in football, man. Like, we can't even knock it at this point. You can't deny it. Kentucky football is coming. Actually, at this point, today as it stands, Kentucky football is probably more popular with the fans than basketball is. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Calipari has done an amazing job at Kentucky as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you got one national championship, four Final Four appearances. So at the end of the day, I think Calipari has done a wonderful job for Kentucky basketball. But most fans with the what have you done for me lately attitude are kind of looking at Calipari like, man, we we kind of waiting on you to do something special. You ain't done nothing special in a while. And unfortunately, Kentucky football has been so bad that what Mark Stoops is doing is crazy right now. Like we just never thought we would have a program where we will be having – four stars and five star recruits looking at Kentucky. We'd be having guys transfer from schools like Georgia and Alabama come to Kentucky. We'd be beating out schools like Tennessee and Florida for recruits. Like we just never saw this coming, right? So we just looking at the future and looking what Mark Stoops is building at Kentucky. And a lot of the people was like, hey man, Kentucky football, um at some point Kentucky may make this a football school. And while I do think Kentucky football is on the rise, they play in the SEC, so they're playing against the best competition. I do think that in order for Kentucky to be looked at as a football school, we're going to have to get to a point where we consistently are as good as Alabama and Georgia. Um, And that's still going to be a little ways away. Like, I do think that Kentucky's closing the gap, but it's got to get to a point where we in the BCS championship, uh, where we have an opportunity to win a national championship. And I'm not going to lie to you. If Mark Stoops was to get into the BCS championship or, you know, actually win the national championship, they put a statue of Mark Stoops on the campus. And I would definitely support that because I would never in my lifetime be able to tell you that I saw that coming. But for right now, Kentucky, in my eyes, is definitely a basketball school. But the main thing is I don't want fans to be divided, and I'm glad that the players haven't got into the back and forth. It just seems to be the coaches kind of saying a couple of things here and there, but I'm glad that the the players are just kind of staying out of it, and they're just keeping their head down, they're grinding, they're minding their own business, and um, they're staying focused. So, you know, whether the coaches are getting a little out of pocket here and there, you know, I'm glad to see that the kids still got the the goal in front of them and the 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 focus they're focused on, you know, having a successful season and competing for a championship. And that's what I want from from them, you know. So hopefully, um, you know, I haven't heard too much about it in the last day or so. So hopefully it's just blow over. I don't, like I said, I don't think Calipari meant any disrespect to Mark Stoops or what the football team is doing. I think he just was kind of trying to make a point that, you know, uh, he would just feel like as much as the program means to Kentucky and college basketball in general, that they would take that in consideration and, you know, try to give him the better facilities that he needs. And I think he deserves it. I think, um, you know, the basketball team should be taken care of because even though they may not make as much money as the football team, they definitely are, uh, you know, traditionally stamped in college basketball and they deserve to always, you know, have the nicest, you know, have at least in the top tier of the nicest facilities and, and different amenities as every other school in the country. So hopefully they'll get that situation settled and, You know, there was kind of, you know, Mitch Barnhart kind of made a couple of little funny statements, like kind of like he was almost implying to Cal, like, man, you need to quit being so entitled and and that you could be uh, replaced and, you know, different things like that, which leads me to my my last topic before I wrap this up. I think a lot of people are kind of frustrated with Cal, and I think it leads them to make uh, emotional comments and emotional statements. 
And one of the things that I don't want to do is I don't want people to get so upset with Cal that they really take for granted how much Cal really means to the program and how much he actually has accomplished at Kentucky. Because right now, if you know, a lot of people think Calipari is replaceable, but I don't see him as very replaceable. I mean, you look at Memphis, right? Calipari left Memphis and they've only won three tournament games, I believe, since he's left Memphis. So I don't want people to just have this uh, mentality that it's just so easy to replace Calipari because it's not. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of great coaches out there. I mean, can you replace Calipari? I mean, it's Kentucky, so of course you can replace him. Like, there's going to be guys lining up to take his job at Kentucky. But can you replace him with a guy that's going to give you – you know, the level of success that Calipari has brought to Kentucky. Because like I said, even though people want to always knock him because he may have lost a couple of games here and there that they think that he should have won, he still brought us a championship. He still brought us four Final Fours. And at the end of the day, you can't really name any coaches that's currently coaching in college today that have a better resume than, than Coach Cal does. I mean, you might can say Bill Self because he did finally get this second championship. But outside of him, who can you really say has a better resume? At this point, it's not really anybody out there because all the other coaches that was comparable, you know, they either retired and moved on or, you know, they have similar situations to Cal. Like Tom Izzo, uh, but his resume isn't any better or worse than Coach Calipari's, and I doubt you could or would even want to replace Cal with Izzo. So at the end of the day, man, they do need to give some uh, respect to Coach Cal, man. But I just hope all of this Kentucky beef uh, blows over and um, we can just move on to getting back to, you know, positive energy for the football team right now since they're up first and then later on in the next few months, get some positive energy to the basketball team and hopefully both of them can have a successful uh, season and maybe who knows man maybe in the next you know several years we could have a team that could be be competing for a championship in both sports and then we wouldn't even have to worry about who's better we would already know that Kentucky's the best in both sports but anyways I'll wrap it up right there I didn't mean to actually go on this long um But you guys let me know what you think about this weird Kentucky feud and, you know, just in general how you feel about Coach Cal. And also, what did you think about the team in the Bahamas? Let me know how y'all feel about all that, and we'll get back at it next time on Sports and Discourse with Derek Stevenson.